What you fella see when you look at this picture? You see a luxury brand created by one of the greatest musicians, hip hop musicians of all time. So do you see something different? Well, I see something different. And it all started with the cross, which is called the cross of Lorraine. Now you have your naysayers that says the liquor comes from France and the symbol was used by the French army during World War II in Germany. But this cross predates that. It was made popular during the time of the Crusades and with the Knights Templar. And despite what history shows, some of the Knights were black men also. And they were very powerful, influential group, just as they are today around the world. And along with that power and influence came with a great amount of wealth that controlled kings and city-states, which was a major threat and a reason it was killed off. But the ones that did survive secretly developed over time what became Freemasonry. Which brings it to the brother Jay-Z, a hover, a god of oneself. The brother is a Freemason, and he climbed the ladder a long time ago. Long time ago. And as far as black entertainers goes in the brotherhood, he is the most prominent. I mean, you still have your Quincy Jones, but he's old. You had your Clarence Avon, who recently died. I mean, Jay is at the top spot. And know you got Puff, uh, P. Diddy. And speaking of Puff, I know... You've been hearing the headlines on him with the Keefe D and connections to Tupac murder. And now with the Cassie relationship with the abuse and sex trafficking, which is unfortunate, but Cassie know what she was. She was a sex toy, no different than Young Miami. It is what it is. The women in the entertainment industry are only sex objects. But those two inc incidents made it obvious that the elites of high ups were getting that puff. And like Jay-Z would do, say Puff has a rock. And that's what the drama started because he publicly outed Ciroc parent company, Diego Spirits, about his marketing of his brand, plus with the lawsuits accusing them of racist practices. But, you know, it's levels to this brother love. Just because you have money don't guarantee power. And the CEO of Diego Spirits and his board of directors have both. They're the real elites that control this society. I mean, these guys are your politicians, your Wall Street and central bankers, your record executives, Hollywood producers. They're the ones that give the P. Diddy's and the Jay-Z's their power and influence over a certain demographic of people, which is their own, black people. And that's what gives Jay the top spot because he knows all of this. He's not as flamboyant and arrogant as Puff. He's more reserved. He's more disciplined to the game and play it close to the chest. Which in part was the reason he was given equity in the Duce deal itself. Why his counterpart was a, an ambassador, a high paid employee with Ciroc. And unlike Diddy, what gives Jay his true authority is that he's an asset that controls greater assets. And no, no asset is more greater than the queen of heaven herself, Beyonce. Just straight in your face. They don't even hide it no more. Because they understand the majority of the population is under mind control. She's under the program. And she said it herself with the Sasha Fierce. But look, all high level entertainers, from the Michael Jacksons to the Princess to Beyonce, were all under control. And controlled by handlers, whether it be their agents, their therapists, doctors, their significant others, wives, husbands, Jay Z. The Jay-Z and Beyonce marriage was a power move, no doubt. It was an arranged marriage between the two just to open up doors together that would have been closed if they were separate. And as you can see how his asset accumulated throughout the marriage. And that's the game they least play. The 1% marry the 1%. Concentrate the wealth to only a few. The only thing is, is that Jay-Z is boule. He's a black man, a nigga, with the longest leech. <laughs> He could keep his wealth and godlike status as long as he controlled his supposed black culture in the direction the high ups wanted to go. Best believe they have a follow on the brother too. If he decided to get out of line, whether it's sexual abuse or rape charges, domestic violence, forced drug uses on Beyonce or other women, the same shit that's happened to Puff could happen to him. Like the great comedian Eddie Griffin says, Charge. There is a systematic effort to destroy every black male entertainment's, entertainer's image. 
They want us all to have an actress by our name. Kobe raped a white woman in Colorado. Dr. Cosby raped 37 bitches and is still counting. Nobody leaves this business clean. Michael Jackson, fuck little white children. Michael Jordan? Michael Jordan gambled. Mm, right, and then his dad got killed. And you understand? They, they try to tie that You're in. not going to die clean. And that's the old blood in, blood out. He get out of line, even Beyonce herself would give him up just to keep up position for him going against the programming. The brother knows that. And he's self-aware and too intelligent to betray his oath. And what happens if he crosses? So he plays the game. The nigga even have a former FBI informant on his payroll. So what that tell you? He at the mercy of his God. The one that gave him the power to have the leverage to control the Beyonce's, the Rihanna's, even the Kanye West. And Kanye West is one of those artists that end up dead or knocked off from an overdose or a car accident for pushing the powers that be too far. Only reason to me the brother is still alive is that he's a highly influential cash producing commodity. From the music to his clothing apparels with Adidas. But you can see why Jay distanced himself from Kanye. I mean the nigga is mentally damaged. Between the medication and the psychotherapy, he's too hard to control. Right. They can't control me. You get what I'm saying? They can control Shaq. They could control Charles Barkley. They could control LeBron James. They could control Jay Z and Beyonce. Well, not you, man. But they can't control me. Not you see, you. it ain't no name I won't name. Exactly. It's up. My mama was sacrificed. Me too. You understand? Yeah. You appreciate it. Michael you. Jordan. What about him? His daddy, right? Bill Cosby, his son, right? Dr. Dre, his son. You're out in Hollywood, a lot of people come up missing. Too hard to control. That's what they call a hard-headed nigga. And that would cause the rift between him and Jay. I mean, even the Kardashian bitches couldn't control him. And they modern day slave catchers. They professionals on how to catch a nigga. They made a living off of that. And that's what this entertainment industry is about, man. It's about control and power. And no other hip-hop exec, a few exec, period, has that type of influence, not only on the masses of people, but on other rap artists than Jay-Z himself. Jay-Z is their pope, their idol. They bow and kiss his ring every chance they get. Just listen to the interviews and the podcasts when they talking about him. They worship the hover. They know if they don't pledge allegiance, their careers get cut or them doors get closed or blackballed. Like what happened with the Chris Browns and the Tory Lanes when they threatened his own assets in Rihanna and Megan Thee Stallion, which... Who was the Marilyn Monroe's of the day's era? I mean, these bitches been around the block like corner stores. That's how they accumulated their wealth and status, by selling themselves and selling sex. And that's just the entertainment industry, period. Females that make it to the top must sell body and soul. But it just shows the level of clout that Jay-Z has. And it's the reason why he's a high-level mason, a top gatekeeper that protects the old. And the ruler and least understand the importance of having black bourgeoisies, as Dr. Umar would say, at the table, to help them on how to push the black community in a disadvantaged position while only the blacks in the brotherhood benefit. You know, at first it started with preachers, then it moved to intellectuals, now it's the athletes and entertainers, and Jay-Z is at the forefront of that, and he reaps all the rewards, most definitely, from being the face and ambassador of the Brooklyn Nets, Barclays Centers, that helped gentrify and force thousands of black residents out the area. He gets rewarded to rock nations. The title streaming services. The NFL halftime Super Bowl deals. The Duce. The Cross of Lorraine, which in itself is an honor and tribute to the brotherhood who they serve. And recently, the Book of Hove. A library, they, they turned that shit into a shrine for Jay-Z. A place to worship an idol. But I just, I just wanted to show you, brothers, just to be aware of the symbolism that's being presented to you, whether it's being through a product or a celebrity, or Jay-Z, or Sean Carter, the Elohim of oneself. But for sure, man, I'll be with y'all next time.